All right, so welcome back. Uh, today, we're gonna be using Unity's scriptable object system to create a signal system between objects inside Unity so that we no longer have to have rigid connections and hopefully you will never have to see null reference exception error ever, ever again. So welcome and let's get right into it. All right, so where we left off, uh, we have our game here where we can walk around in the world. We have some knockback that's caused when we hit the enemy or when we hit the enemy or when the enemy hits us or when we hit the enemy and the enemy has two health points. Now, I didn't go over how you can add some actual juice to that, but um, we'll cover this later because it's more of a juice thing, but you can add particles to that. You can add sound effects to that. You can add a little bit of screen kick. Uh, just to have a bit more weight to your strikes so it doesn't look like you're just overlapping a sword with a, an object in the world. Um, so we can cover that later, but for now, we've got our health system working. So today, we're going to talk about having the player have a health system. Now, to do this, I'm going to be using a design pattern that is different from the way most people would do this. So if you've made a project similar to this or other kinds of projects in Unity before, you might be very confused about why I'm doing what I'm doing, but hopefully by the end, it'll make much more sense. So in Unity, um, you might even be new enough that you don't know what a design pattern is. So a design pattern, for those of you who are uninitiated, is exactly what it sounds like. It is a framework or a pattern that you have in mind when you're going about making your project so that you can make a pretty sturdy architecture to build from you can have a design pattern kind of like not necessarily the blueprints to building a house but the style of house that you're building so in your mind as you're going through this you have a specific pattern you want to implement and that way when a new problem comes up and you don't know how to implement it you can look to your design patterns that you've already used to give you an idea of a framework that you can build so most games that are built in unity that are going to need to carry data from scene to scene and that are going to need to have interactions between different objects. For example, when our player gets hit, we're going to want uh, the UI to change because we're going to want our hearts to decrease. And we're also going to want, uh, if we're going as similar to Zelda as possible, we're going to want a little beeping in the background whenever our health gets below a certain level. So in order to have that, um, we need to have some interaction between objects so that we're not just making one big object that does everything. To have that interaction between objects, we need to make connections between them. The usual solution in Unity is to make a very rigid connection where, uh, for example, in our player here, we would have a player health script, and then somewhere else we would have uh, an element of UI to monitor the, um, the number of hearts on the screen. Then, in our player health script, we would make a very rigid connection, either by finding an object with tag, or by finding an object of type, or by making the object public and then assigning it. And then using that rigid connection, we would then make calls to and from the player health script to the UI and vice versa. Now, that is a totally fine way to do stuff. However, you will run into problems if you are making those strong connections between items if, for some reason that connection gets broken. Your whole game is going to break. You'll get what's called a null reference exception error, meaning that you've referenced something in your script that doesn't exist, that is null. And so the reference is empty or null. That's what null reference exception means. Um, to avoid having a null reference exception error, there are a few different things you can do. You can uh, add extra lines to your script to um, make checks to see if those scripts exist or if those objects exist and if they do then perform the code um, which is totally fine to do however if you're making references to multiple objects you're going to have multiple null reference um, checks which means that your code is going to become possibly more complicated and more difficult for other people to read now another solution is you can create something called a singleton object a singleton object is an object that exists between scenes and there's only ever going to be one of them and you use a command called don't destroy on load to make sure that when you change from one scene to another that object carries with you which again is a fine way to do stuff however it requires a rigid connection because your singletons are going to rigidly connect to one another uh, every time the scene loads 
which could cause those same issues. So let's say, for example, that you want to test out a completely different UI system, then you could create a new scene, drop in your player, and drop in your new UI, but your player is looking for the old UI, or perhaps it's looking for a method that's present in the old UI that isn't present in the new UI, present, excuse me, in the new UI, and that would cause a null reference exception. So there are issues that can be caused there. Now, what we're going to be using so as to avoid all of these singleton pattern problems is something called the observer pattern. The observer pattern means that there is an object in the game that watches things happen and then uses that information to tell other objects what to do. So, for example, um, as we were talking here, the health UI. Um, in Zelda, you have these hearts, and when you get hit, the hearts deplete. Now, the hearts don't really need to know anything about the player at all. The player just needs to send the hearts um, a signal to say, hey, this is how much health I have now. And then the hearts say, okay, well that equates to this many hearts. Um, it doesn't need to know anything else about the player, so it doesn't need to have that rigid connection. Instead, you can create a third object that in our case is going to exist only in code that the player will send signals to. So for example, the player will send a signal saying, hey, everything needs to check what my health is. And then that observer will then send out a signal to everything that is subscribed to it to, hey, check the health, and then see what the health is and do stuff according to it. The, uh, the health UI doesn't need to know where the information is coming from. It just needs information. And the player doesn't need to know what all is accessing its health. It just needs to be able to tell things to check what its health is, if that makes any sense. So you can create this much more flexible system where you don't break stuff if you remove items from your scene. Um, like, however, like I said, I have seen this uh, singleton pattern used so much with Unity that doing things in this manner is often very odd for people who aren't used to seeing it this way. So this whole video is just kind of me <laughs> explaining what we're doing and why. So this is almost like, like a whole theory video. Um, so, so that this whole video isn't just theory, let's actually do some scripting. So let's go to our scripts folder and then inside the scriptable objects folder, we're gonna create um, a new script in here and uh, inspired by Godot, I'm gonna call this C sharp script signal. And then uh, in my regular scripts, I'm gonna make a new C sharp script I'm going to call this uh, signal listener as soon as everything catches up to me. Signal listener. So one of these, the signal is going to sit in memory uh, and then tell other things what they need to do. The signal listener is going to go on objects and um, decide what it's going to do based on what the signal tells it to do. So let's open up both of these scripts in uh, Visual Studio, and I'll meet you guys back here in just a minute. All right, so this signal, like I said, is going to be a scriptable object that's going to sit in memory that's going to be our observer. So I'm going to inherit not from mono behavior, but from scriptable object. And then so that I can create one, I'm going to add above create asset menu. I'm going to get rid of the start and update methods because uh, scriptable objects don't receive those. And uh, what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to make a list of signal listeners so that this has a list at all times of everything that is listening to it. So this is going to be a public list of signal listeners. And I'll call this listeners. And this is a new list of type signal listener. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to create a method that I'm just going to call raise, which is to raise a signal. So public void raise. And uh, this is going to require, sorry about that weird cut. This is going to loop through all of the signal listeners that we currently have. And for each of them, it's going to uh, raise a method that we're going to create on it. So to make sure we don't have, because I hate it when Visual Studio does that red underline, I'm going to go back and open up my signal listener script too. Now in the signal listener script, this is going to inherit from mono behavior because this is going to go on an actual game object. But we need to inherit another 
system here. So we're going to add using Unity Engine dot events because we're going to be using the Unity event system. Now in here, I'm going to create a new little method. Uh, let's say public void, and this is going to be called on signal raised. And then this is just going to do something when we raise the signal. We'll come back to this in just a second. So back over here to our signal. Now we're going to go through our list of listeners, but we're going to go through it backwards to make sure that in case one of the things the listener does is remove itself from the list, we're not causing an out of range exception. So for int i is equal to listeners.count minus one. So we're starting at the end. We're going to say i is greater than or equal to zero. So we're going to end at zero. i minus minus. So we're removing stuff, or at least going through it backwards. So again, if we remove anything, we don't cause an error. And then all we want to do here is listeners i dot on signal raised. So whatever it needs to do for the signal, it's going to do that. Um, all right, cool. Now. Uh, do, 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 do. I think that's good for the moment. We're going to go back to our signal over here. And let's flesh our signal listener. And let's flesh this out a little bit. So this is going to need a public signal, which is the signal it's going to listen to. I'm just going to call it signal. And it's also going to need a public unity event that I'm going to call event. I guess I can't call it event. I'll call it signal event. And then on signal raised, I'm going to do signal event dot invoke, which is just going to call whatever the event is. Now, when this object gets created, so public void, um, actually, this doesn't need to be a public. So we'll do private void on enable then all we're going to do when we enable is go to the um, the signal and register ourselves, which means that the signal needs to have both a register and a deregister uh, method. So we'll make a public void register listener, and this is going to take in a signal listener that I'll call listener. And um, what we're going to do is take our list of listeners listeners dot add and we want to add to it that particular listener and we're going to need a deregister as well so public void d register listener and this is going to take a signal listener listener as an argument and we're going to do listeners dot remove listener Cool. So we have a way to add stuff to the list and remove stuff from the list. If we go back over here to signal lister on enable, we're going to go to our signal, register listener, and we're going to register this. And then on disable, so that we're not taking up memory, we're going to do private void on disable, signal dot deregister listener this. All right, cool. So I'm going to save my scripts. Now, this is a signal system. This is uh, something that Ecdo has built in that allows us to create these very flexible connections between things. Because now, instead of specifically finding the object and calling the method in the object, we're sending up a signal, and the signal can then notify everything that subscribes to it to do something. Um, this is based almost entirely, completely, you can even use the word stolen, <laughs> from a, um, a talk done by Kyle Hipple, I think his name is, it's either Kyle Hipple or Eric Hipple, I apologize for not knowing your first name, uh, that he did uh, at Unite a couple years ago on how to use scriptable objects. Um, I'll link that talk in the below, he does it way better than I do, but so now if I go to my scriptable objects folder here, the one that is in inside scripts, I can right click, choose create, and I want to create a signal, and I'm going to call this health 
signal. And this just needs to know the listeners. Now on any one specific thing, uh, let's say for example, um, our if we had a UI here, uh, which we already have a canvas, so let's just add a quick UI element. So UI, let's do an image, and let's go to our scene, zoom way the heck out, and we can put this image in the upper left hand corner, and I'll anchor it up there. Now I'm going to change this image to be something from the art that some of you have already seen. Um, so we're going to go something super, super zelda E. Let me see which object it is. So this one right here that I want. It's objects 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to scroll down and find object 123. So 120, 121, 122, 123. There we go. And on my image, 20, 121, 122, 123. I'm just going to make that its uh, image. And I will preserve aspect. And I'll change this to call it health holder or health frame or something like that. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit here so it's nice and big. Oh, no, still not as big as I want it probably. Let's not just mess around. Let's actually find out. Let's make it 256 wide and let's make it 192 tall. It's pretty close to its actual aspect ratio, and that's a good amount to take up in the scene. So in our health holder, if I were to add a component, a signal listener, this allows me to tell it what signal it's listening for, and in my scriptable objects, it's going to listen for my health signal. And now I can give it an event. So this event can be anything. It can be a, um, a sorry, it can be a method from any object in the scene or not in the scene. It also can be some pre-built things. So for example, if I have it be its own health object, my function could be uh, to make it inactive. So I could do set active bool, and I'll make it false. Or that's true, <laughs> that would be false. Um, but we're gonna cover this more next time so that we can get a lot more into this and show exactly what this signal system is used for. So for now, uh, that's all we're gonna cover for today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Um, if you don't know where, if you don't understand where we're going with this, just, I promise you, just stay with me. Um, it'll make sense very, very soon. Um, if you want to join me on Twitter, you can find it when I post new videos. You can join my Discord, where I'm chatting pretty much every day. I have a couple big announcements coming next week, so watch out for those. And yeah, everybody out there, have yourselves a wonderful day.